old are see. you? 19. What do you do for a living? Um, right Mom now is I'm not doing, an answer. I'm doing construction. How many days a week? Uh, uh, it's not an answer. Five. For whom? My friend's uh, family. Who's this? That's my friend Noah. He's my witness in this case. It's not going to be good for you. You answered an ad that Mr. Matsko put on Craigslist for an ATV. And you went to his house in September. Do you remember the date in September? No, ma'am. What was the date in September? It was Labor Day of September. It was a Monday. What did you need an ATV for? To go riding with my friends. How much were you asking for this ATV? $3,400. The defendant came to look at it? Yes, ma'am. And he agreed to pay you the $3,400? Yes, he wrote me a check. When had you purchased this ATV? Uh, in 2012. How much did you pay for it? I paid $3,500 for it. Well, explain to me how it only depreciated $100 since you bought it four years ago. Because I put a snorkel kit on it, a radiator relocator kit on it, aftermarket tires and rims, and the engine has also been rebuilt. So I was wanting to get a boat, so I was selling that to buy a boat. That's the price he agreed to? Yes. Sounds a little much to me after four years, but that's the price that he agreed to. It didn't make any difference to him because he stopped payment on the check. Correct. After he left your premises with the ATV. Is that right, sir? Yes. And you never met him before? No, ma'am. So this is an arm's length transaction. And what the plaintiff said to you was, pay careful attention, I'll take the check. I'm holding on to the title. When the check clears, I'll give you the title. That sounds like a normal thing that this normal person would say to you, right? Yes. And that's what he said, not this nonsense that you wrote in your answer. He told me that... No, no, now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Remember what you wrote? Yeah. Remember what you wrote in your answer? Yes, Do you I remember? Did. Are you sure? Yes. Let's see. Tell me what you said. I told him that I would write him the check, or I'd give him the check as collateral to take the ATV home, and that he would give me the, mail me the title, and he told me that it was in perfect condition, nothing was wrong with it, and that he would happily take it back if there was anything wrong with it or if there was anything I did not like. Is that what you told him? No. Oh, of course not. Of course not. Gave him a check, he gave you the merchandise that you purchased, and then your friend was with you, right? Not this one, but a different one. He was there when it blew on me. Where was the friend that you went with? Um, he could not come, but he gave me a written statement. I don't do written statements. I'm not gonna take his testimony either. You drove off with the ATV. Yes, ma'am. You bought it. Now he canceled the check. Yes, ma'am. Because Monday the banks were closed, you couldn't go in. So what did you do? You went in on Tuesday? I tried to go Tuesday um, to my credit union because I also have a credit union. I've cashed other banks that are also credit unions at my credit union before, but for some reason uh, they would not cash this check. His bank is all the way in Merritt Island, which is approximately two hours from my house. So he's a very nice kid. So I asked him if he could bring me the cash and we could just exchange title and bill of sale then. He said, absolutely. So he sent me a text message. On what date? That was on Wednesday of that same week. So now he's had the ATV Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. And you have text messages to establish that. Correct. Okay, so on Wednesday he wasn't complaining, moaning, anything else about the condition of the ATV? No, still running good. Ah, uh, fine. Go yeah. ahead.